son is cooking something downstairs. <clears throat> hello, everyone. Hello, hello, hello. Hope everyone is doing safe out there and doing well. And as we all are at home now with the kids, oh my God, it's, it's not easy. I pray for grace for all the mothers out there. All right? Hope you all have been washing your hands, you know, sneezing your elbow and doing all those little things that we're supposed to do and keep trusting in the Lord, okay? All right, so anyways, uh, my name is Apatina Nayenti. I'm your family life and relationship coach and this is my section of Ask Apatina where people bring all the questions about relationships, courtships, you know, datings and marriages and all that stuff. And I answer three questions every Friday. And today our first question is, um, well, let me see anybody, nobody is on here anyways. But anyways, if you, thank you for joining, if you joining me live, and thank you for joining if you are watching the replay, okay? I appreciate your time. I don't take it for granted. People are busy doing stuff, and if you take your precious time to come and watch me, I really, you know, appreciate your time. I don't take it for granted. I love you. And I appreciate you. YouTube, thank you. I do the same. <clears throat> thank you, thank you, thank you, YouTubers, for watching me and taking your time to come and listen to what I have to say. All right? So let's just jump into it. So our first question here is, um, I think this question is from a guy. <clears throat> he said, I met this wonderful lady, and she is beautiful, smart, and successful. She is so kind and gentle, and I love her, but she isn't a Christian. What do I do? Hmm, really? So, first of all, the Bible tells us not to equally yoke, not to equally be yoked with unbelievers. Okay, so she's not a Christian. I don't know whether she's a Muslim, or, you know, she have different religion, you know, religious beliefs, or whatever, but we cannot associates with oof. my god somebody was calling me we cannot uh, associate with unbelievers so that's the first tip on that all right but if this person is willing to and then uh, amos amos 3 3 says oh can two people i'm reading from the nlt version he said can two people walk together without agreeing on directions so it's hard for two people not to have the same beliefs. You know, it's, it's going to be very difficult because the person have another belief in another religion and you have another belief, you know, so it, it's going to be tough. But if the person, if this lady, sometimes people in love, you know, they kind of like gravitate to different things, you know, with their partners. <clears throat> if, you, if it's possible... You can try winning her over to Christ. You know, I know a lot of Muslims that got converted through their partners, through their spouses. So if you can try, you know, pray for her. And if you really love this person, and you can pray for her and, um, you know, bring her over to Christ and help her to win her soul for Christ. And then, you know, that's fine. But it's very dangerous to... Want to marry to somebody because she's successful, she's beautiful. That is not, you know, those are not, um, those are just a, a bad products for marriage. It's more than that. You know, a lot of people get into marriages because of beauty, because of the person being successful and all that stuff. And those things fade away. Why if the beauty fade away, you know, what, what's next? So you seek marriage. When you're trying to seek marriage, you look for more than beauty and success. All right. So, <clears throat> like I said, she's in, then moreover, she's not a Christian. You have to ready, you guys have to ready to sit down. Because sometimes when people are trying to uh, find their, li their life partners, they don't really think about their born children. You know, they, uh, they just, you know, it's just all about them. You know, what makes them happy. And then people always have the cliche, you know, Liberian cliche. Uh, when we get to that bridge, we're gonna cross it. That's 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 just being foolish, you know. Sorry to say, but that's that's being foolish to say. When we get to that bridge, we're gonna cross it. You have to discuss all of those things. 
Because this person is the unbeliever. They're not a Christian and you want to get married to them. What's going to happen to your children? You know, which which religion your kids going to follow? You know, are they going to be Christian or are they going to be whatever? Maybe let's say, okay, let's take it for a Muslim. You know, this person is a Muslim. And are your kids going to go to Muslim school or Christian school? Or, you know, they're going to pray to the mosque or you're going to go to church. So it's, it's kind of confusing. The kids are always the ones that get into that mess and they kind of mess up in their mind. You know, and then she have she gonna have her parents, her Muslim parents. Okay, the kids gonna go visit them, and then when they get over there, the parents, you know, they, they practice Islam and all that stuff. Are the kids gonna practice those things? And then when they get back home, they're gonna be they're gonna be doing you know Christian things. So what are you, what message are you sending to the children? So all of these things has to be discussed. Don't just it just should not be about you. You know, it shouldn't just be about you that. Uh, oh, you know, because she's successful, she's beautiful, so I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna marry to her. You guys have to discuss about your religious beliefs, you know, your core values and all that stuff. So my, the, my answer to this is, I don't think it's the right thing. You know, you have to rethink it if you saw a beautiful woman and she's beautiful, she's successful, and she's not a Christian and you are a Christian. The Bible says that we should not equally yoke with unbelievers. And it must say that hacking two walls together if they don't agree, it's gonna be a problem in the long run. So you don't want to attempt that, you know. I don't think it's the right choice. All right. So let's get to the next question. The next question is: My boyfriend is a Christian, but he has asked me to move in with him. I currently have nowhere to live, and we will be in separate rooms. What should I do? Hmm. Your boyfriend is a Christian and you guys are not married and he, he wants you to move in with him because you do not have anywhere to stay and you guys gonna live in separate room. I think you are setting your set yourself you guys are setting yourself up for failure and f to sin because um you the Bible says that you know we should not uh, you know, get involved or engage in premarital sex, you know. So are you guys like very disciplined to live under the same roof and you guys in the, you know in like in the next in separate rooms can you really sustain that can you maintain that you know that i don't think that is a good idea you know it's not it's not a good idea you're opening your you're opening doors to sin because if you don't have anywhere to stay then you guys if this is a person that you really want to spend the rest of your life with i would say you guys talk about marriage you know talk about your core values and you do all the other necessary checks that you want to do on this person and see if this person is the right person for you to get married or so then you guys can go ahead and if you don't have the money and you don't have uh, you know everything you guys can go ahead and just call a pastor or somebody that you believe in and they can just perform a, a little wedding for you guys until you guys can do whatever big stuff you want to do but moving in with somebody that you are not married to and he being a Christian Telling you to move in with him, we gotta question his motives as well. You know, because I don't think a true believer, like I always say, people that say the Christian and just go to church, is you have to really dig deep. Because people, Christ, a Christian is supposed to be Christ like, you know, supposed to be like Christ. So you cannot move in with a man, or man cannot suggest to you to move in with him. If you are not married to him because you don't have anywhere to go you have to you have to try and find somewhere to go that is not I don't think that is the only person that you have in this world I know you have relatives you have friends you know you can ask them to stay with him for one or two months you know but moving in with that guy I don't think it's the right thing because trust me you want to move in with him and you guys are gonna be living in that place for almost two three years and he might not even get married to you so that's a wrong choice. If you want to move in with him, you have to make it right. If this is the person that you want, that you think you can live the rest of your life with, and you think he's your life partner, then you guys just go ahead and get married. You know, it don't have to be anything big or extravagant. So I don't think it's the right decision. And then according to 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 22 says, Run from anything that, that stimulates youthful, youth, youth, youthful lust. Instead, pursue righteous living, faithfulness, love, and peace. 
enjoy the companionship of those who call on the Lord with pure hearts. So that's why Timothy is telling us to run away from every youthful, you know, sin from from loss. So that if you're moving with a man and you are not married to, and the Bible is telling us not to, um, not to engage in premarital sex, you are setting yourself up for failure. I'm telling you, it's not it's it's, it's not possible to be in love with somebody and you live on the same roof and try to maintain that thing. You know, you try to maintain your purity and your premarital. Uh, um, uh, you know, the, your what they call it, it's not right. You have to set standards, you know, you have to you have to set yourself up high. Tell him, I cannot move in with you if you want me. You cannot because sometimes people use your situation to to cause you to, to sin or to cause you to do things that you don't want to do. So, we have to have self control. You cannot allow your situation to cause you to do things that not that you know that you're not prepared for. You know, or that will lead you into trouble, or that will lead you into problem. You know, so I don't think it's a right choice to move in with a boyfriend that you are not married to. All right. So the third question and the last question is: I am a married. I am married to a non-Christian. I think this person is married. I'm married to a non-Christian, and I stay. How can I stay obedient to God and be a good wife? Oh wow. So, anyways, um. According to First Corinthians, uh, sorry, is that First Corinthians? Yes, um, First Corinthians chapter seven to seven fourteen to sixteen says, um, to, 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 fourteen to sixteen says, for the Christian wife bring holiness to her marriage, and the Christian husband brings holiness to his marriage. Otherwise, your children will not be holy. But now that they are holy, but if the husband or the wife who isn't a believer insists leaving, let them go. In such cases, the, 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 the Christian husband or wife is no longer bound to the other. For God has called you to live in peace. Don't you wives realize that your husband might be saved because of you? And don't you husband realize that your wife might be saved because of you? So anyway, so this question is asking that if you marry to a Christian, to a non-Christian, how can you stay obedient and be a good wife? You know, you can, I mean, you don't have to feel sorry for yourself to, if you are married to a non-Christian, because most of the time people, people, you know, uh, two people are, are living in the world and then one of them gets saved you know and then the other one is still in the world you know god has not touched him yet they still are uh, doing worldly things and then the woman usually always the women you know they always uh, start to do things they're on fire for the lord so in this case like first Corinthians saying that if your unbelieving husband is still willing to stay with you you know you don't have to let him go you don't have to, you know, you don't have to force him, or, uh, you know, in as much as he's, he's not driving you to sin, you know, on righteousness. Because some husbands that are not following God, as, as when, when they see you doing the things of God, they get mad and then they try to, you know, manipulate you and then they try to force you. But as long as that partner is ready, is, is still willing to stay with you, you know. I, the Bible said you can stay with them regardless whether they're unbelieving or they're not. You know, like I said, as long as they're not leading you to sin, the last week we talk all those things, they're trying to make you do orgies, they're trying to make you watch pornography with them, they're trying to make you do all kinds of illicit, you know, all kinds of dirty sex. You don't, you have, you can stay with them. Okay, you don't have to follow the sinful behavior because of you. Your family will be sanctified, your kids will be sanctified, your home will be sanctified because of you. You want to take authority in the law of righteousness in that home because of you. That home is going to be covered, that home is going to be blessed. But it does not mean that your husband is going to have his salvation because everybody has to seek their own salvation. Your salvation cannot cover his salvation, but because of your, your salvation and your, your belief in God. Your home is going to be covered and your kids are going to be holy. That's why it says in First Corinthians chapter seven to, 
to, to 14, I mean, that's 7, 14 to 18. So you have to pray for him because your, your own believing husband or your own believing wife could get saved through you. Don't give up on them. You know, don't give up on them. Like I said, it is not leaving you to unrighteousness because all, everything we do in this world is to live righteously in God. We have to live unto the Lord. Whatever we do is unto God. So, if this partner is not leading you to sin and leading you to unrighteousness and they are willing to stay, they're willing to see you fasting and praying and reading the Bible, it's okay. You can stay with them. You don't have to leave them. All right? So, that's that's the question for... for um, that's the answer for that question. That person who asked that if they married or non-Christian, if they could stay, be, how, how can they be obedient to God and be a good wife? You can still be a good wife. You can still be a good husband if you're married to an unbelieving husband and an unbelieving wife as long as they are not pushing you. But if they say they want to leave, because the only time God gave us permission to divorce if there's sexual immorality, okay? But if this unbelieving person, because you cannot divorce your husband because he say, oh, I have changed. God has called me. I'm a believing wife now, so I can't. I want to divorce this man. That's wrong. The Bible did not give you uh, authority to do that. The Bible said the only thing you can leave your husband if there's infidelity. So if the person is not saved, they are unbelieving, you are welcome to stay with them unless they decide to leave, then you are set free. Okay? Unless if that husband or that wife decides to leave the marriage, then you are set free because the Bible said we should live in peace with everyone. You can't fight it, you can't fight them, you cannot, you know, stop going uh, uh, with them. So today, uh, so that those are the three questions that I have today. So I just want to let everyone know that in this time and season, it's a time to, to, to really seek the face of God. I know you can listen to the news. Don't get carried away by the news. They are doing their job. You know, they have to make their reports of everything that is going around the world. Now is the season. It's a great opportunity for we kingdom citizens, believers, to seek God and to bring those dreams to pass that God has put in our life. You know, to, to, to go to God and go into solitude and seek His face. Say, God, this in this season, what do you want me to do? Where is my assignment? Where is my life purpose? Show me, reveal to me. This is not time to be, you know, trembling and, 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 and be so fearful, you know. You, you, I can't find tissue, I can't find rice, I can't find oil, and you're just so afraid. No, we, we, we're supposed to bring solution to this problem. Okay, we, we cannot be afraid with everybody else. We're supposed to look at this thing differently. We cannot be afraid. So I want you to join me today. I'm starting on seven days fast. You know, I'm going to start I'm, uh, from, from today to next week, Thursday. You are welcome to join me, you know. Let's go into solitude. Let's go seek the face of God to ask him, what's the message in this thing? Because there is a great revelation in this thing that is going with the whole coronavirus thing. I believe strongly that it's a, it's a great message for everybody. So everybody needs to put themselves in a position to be able to hear from God, not to be carried away by fear. You know, not to be carried away by fear. We pray for those people who are dying. We pray for those people who are sick because we are not better than them. It could be us. It could be our families. You know, but we pray. We, we're going to pray and seek the face of God. But we cannot be living in fear. We have to be in a place of position ourselves because after this thing, I can sense it that it's going to be a great harvest. There's a great harvest coming for, 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 for kingdom citizens, for believers. So we have to position ourselves now for God to deploy us in our strategic uh, 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 spheres of influence. Okay? This thing is not ordinary. So we have to be there, seek the face of God, pray, you know, go into fasting, solitude, you know, lock yourself up. You know, I mean, I know the case at home, but you have to, we have to have fun time to be with God, to ask Him to, 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 to ready show us and speak to us what, what what's the next step what he want us to do in this season with all this thing in those husbands and wives that are home you know because it's not easy you you know people don't understand it's very chaotic sometimes their husband will go to work and then the wife go to work so they don't have that much time together you know so those hard feelings and you know um anger and all that stuff they don't really realize it but now people are forced to be together you guys don't even know what's going on in homes you know because i mean some people they, they cannot even stay each other but because they used to go to work so it used to be easy but now they are forced to be locked up 
in the house for 24 hours. It's a lot going on in families. So if you're in a situation, I just want to pray for you this afternoon and ask God to bless your marriage and bring healing to your marriage because this is a time that God is also using to bond families together. You know, the kids always in school, we're always at work doing stuff and all that stuff. This is a season for a lot of things. We just have to be attentive to listen and understand what God is speaking to us, okay? This is a time. This is not time for confusion. It's not time for anger. It's not time if you have anger or anything against your husband or your wife. Pray to God. Say, God, please let me love this husband of mine. Please let me love this wife of mine. This child that I can't go out now, let me keep loving this child. Because this is a time to bond together as a family. Like I said, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a time to bond together. So let's pray. Let's go join me in the seven days fast. I'm starting today. Until next week, Thursday, you can call me. We can pray together on the phone. I'm available. You know, you can reach me on um, WhatsApp. Uh, I am all in, 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 you know, a, a messenger. Let's pray together. Let's ask God to cover our families, to cover the world. Let, let his kingdom come. Let people get to know him more. Let people get to experience him because there's too many wicked things in the world. That one I posted the other day. He said in First Chronic, uh, yeah, uh, Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. <clears throat> Second Chronicles, yes, yeah, sorry. Second Chronicles seven fourteen. He said, "If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and seek my face and turn from the wicked way, I will hear them. I will I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and heal the land." God said He will heal us if we humble ourselves and call and cry to Him and seek His face. Let's go to God and confess. This is a time of to I mean to get, to come closer, come in repentance to God. You know, if you have, we know we know all the things that we do. You know, sometimes we people lie, people steal, people fornicate, people commit adultery and all that stuff. This is the season that you go to God and say, God, you you, you I am your representative. I am your child, and you send me here on a special assignment. You do not, you do not fornicate. You do not commit adultery, Lord. I do not. I, I don't want to be that person that will be fornicating and, and committing adultery. Ask God. God will help you. That's why we have to serve God in humility. If you go to Him and pray to Him and tell Him all oh, these the proudful ways I have, it's not for you, oh God. You're not a God of proud. You spoke against proudness. You spoke against lies. You spoke against stealing. You know, you gotta confront those those devils in your life and tell God to take it away from you. And when He see your your humbleness, you know, He gonna help you to take away those things. So this is a season. Don't be afraid, okay? Don't be afraid. Read your Psalm ninety one. Pray over your children. You cook together. You eat together. Love that husband. There's there's no time to be in the other room and the other other person in the other room. It's time to bond together. It's time to be united. All right. So let me not take your time. I have my new website now. You know, you can book a free call with me. I'm going to, my ebook is coming up pretty soon. <clears throat> to, 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 um, it's going to be up there. So, I pray that, you know, every family on this line that is watching live or watching the replay, I pray for unity and peace in families. I pray that, that single women, single men will find the right partner to get married to because it's very important. If you choose the wrong person, it, it, it either destroy, it either, you know, it destroy your whole life. You don't want to be unhappy for the rest of your life because you want to be married. So you have to take time. Don't rush. You know, no, no pressure. Don't allow societal pressure to force you to go and be married to the wrong person or to, to you know, to, to live in, in pain. It's very painful to be living in a house with a woman or a man and you guys don't have no relationship. It, it's, it's not good. So it's, it's very important to take your time. Seek the face of God. He said we should seek the kingdom and everything else will be added unto us. Seek the face of God and he will put you in that place that you receive that you, you will see that person that both of you will live together and fulfill God's purpose together. We cannot take God out of this thing, Roman people. They, uh, let me speak the real Iberian English now. We cannot take God out of this thing. Whoever we marry to, we supposed to, it's supposed to be unto God. So we can do the work of God together. God wants everybody to come closer to Him. I feel so privileged. So privileged. I'm not, I'm not better than other people. I feel so privileged that I'm called and I'm fulfilling my purpose. I'm doing the things that God created me to do. I used to be doing other things, you know, but God, by His grace and His mercy, you know, He brought me closer to Him. So I, I am a unit vessel. I tell Him every day, yeah, I'm I. You know, use me for your purpose. Use me for what you created me for, you know, because it's all unto you, you know, because if we don't do the things God called us to do, 
One day we're gonna stand up before him and answer him. He's gonna ask you where I where I told you to do this. How come you didn't do it? Why do you wanna tell you are so busy working or you're so busy doing this? So we have to go to God in the season and seek his face. Now we don't have to you don't have to drive to go to work. After you get off your computer at home, don't go on Facebook or you listen to CNN whole day to make you to make yourself scared. Already coronavirus, coronavirus, coronavirus. Tell coronavirus, it will not come in your family, it will not come near your home. We pray for those people who are dying, who are suffering from it, but we cannot live by fear, people. We cannot live by fear. Like my pastor said, we should have faith over fear. All right? So thank you all for joining me, for having lunch with me. Oh, yeah, I'm on time. Let me just say a quick prayer for everybody, and then I will see you guys next Friday. All right? So, Father, Lord, I just want to thank you for this time of this meeting oh god i give you all the glory i give you all the praise if only one person is blessed oh god sorry guys somebody was calling if only one person was blessed by this message i just want to give you the glory oh god i pray for families out there i pray for couples who are having issues in their family and they have to be together now and you know and and, 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 and they're having so much uh, or confusion in the home i come against all the spirit of this unity of God, I pray peace in marriages. I pray for single single women and single men to find the right partners of God. I pray for all those who are dying, Lord, in Italy, in New York, all over the world from coronavirus. Okay? I pray, Lord, I pray, I pray that you bring healing to the families. I pray that you touch those people in the hospitals that are sick, oh okay? God. And I pray that you cover our homes, cover our communities, cover our our uh, 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 our children, oh God. Teenagers, sometimes they're so high-headed, they still want to go out there. I pray that you cover them with the blood of Jesus. I thank you, I praise you, and I give you all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. So like I said, I'm starting on seven days fast today. I already started from six to six. And whenever God, you know, however God will direct you, you can start from six to three. Or from 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 you know whatever however when you can do it but you got to we gotta be in the presence of God now. He wants to speak to us and wanna say something to us. Okay, that's just like get too busy with the news and Facebook and everything. There is a season to come closer to God so he can speak to you and let you know what he wants you to do for him. Love you guys. I'll see you next week Friday. Bye bye.